Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we're here in Beechwood today at the Maltz Museum of Jewish Heritage, and we're here with Executive Director Linda Bender. Linda, thanks so much for having us today. Thanks, Tom. Always good to see you. Talk about this really cool ex exhibition that you have here on the wall, Spots of Light, that focuses on women. Yes, this is an exhibition called Spots of Light, To Be a Woman in the Holocaust, and it focuses on individual stories of women and how they cope with the Holocaust and the situation they found themselves in. And the thing I like about it, looking around the, the walls here, it's all video and all projections. First time you've done something like this. It's the first time we've done anything like this. The exhibition comes to us from Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, and most of the material is projected directly on the walls. Each of the panels that you see around us changes and moves, so the... the uh, the name, Spots of Light, really refers not only to the theme of the exhibition, but also to the exhibition itself, which is made of light. So this focuses on the role of women. It's really the first time that's been done. So issues like faith and friendship, everyday life, love, and food was really important, wasn't it, to, to women during the Holocaust? Well, certainly. Food was something, of course, which they were deprived of in many, many situations, both in the ghetto and in concentration camps. And one of the things that the staff here found very interesting when we decided to have the exhibition was the topic of food. So what do women talk about when they get together? What do hungry people talk about? They talk about food. So in the concentration camp, we found that in different places, in different camps, they had the same story. Women Women came together and they shared recipes with each other to stave off their hunger, to help them think about food in a positive way. It's amazing that even though they couldn't even cook a meal, that was what they were sort of talking and obsessing about. Talk about some of the other exhibits that you have in the, in the middle here. This one looks like a sort of makeshift brassiere. <laughs> it is a brassiere. Yes, it's, uh, it's a very uh, unique brassiere. Let's take a look at this. And you'll see here we have a handmade brassiere, and this was made by a woman in the concentration camp. It was made for her niece, and uh, you can see that it was completely homemade. And the woman who made this traded just about everything she had. She traded food rations and things of that nature to get the material for this. The Jewish women, of course, were stripped of all of their items, including their clothing, and underwear became a real stressor for many women. So to create this bra, in the Bergen-Belsen camp, which is the camp where Anne Frank died. This was a real undertaking and something that was very precious to this woman. You see things like piles of shoes at, at uh, Holocaust exhibits, don't you? I think in the, the National uh, Museum in Washington, but uh, you don't think about something as personal as that. And, and other clothes that they made as well, that they really didn't have <laughs> much choice but to, to sort of make this makeshift, right? Yes. Well, what we have here is a uniform that was worn by women in the Theresien, uh, Theresienstadt ghetto, and or, or the Theresienstadt concentration camp. And uh, it's a very... Uh, special kind of object because of course it was worn by a woman in that camp and it was used by women who uh, worked in the kitchen or worked in the gardens. But the thing that I find interesting about it myself is how well it's made. These uniforms were also made by camp prisoners and you can see the quality of the workmanship and the details that women put into this as they would have sewn for their families. They were now unfortunately sewing these uniforms but they were still expressing their creativity in the way the uniform was created. It's really moving to see this stuff up close. Talk about an, another uh, panel that you have over here on, on friendship. Yes, uh, there are a number of different themes in this exhibition, friendship, love, motherhood, uh, personhood, faith, and this one is about friendship. And friendship in the Holocaust between women seems to be a phenomenon uh, for women. Men don't have these same kinds of stories about creating sort of family relationships in concentration camps. And we have over here the story of women who banded together to help themselves and to encourage themselves and to create their own units. They put on plays, they wrote poems, they stole paper from wherever they were working or scraps that they could find to write on. Uh, they painted pictures and they played music. And the music that you hear in the gallery is a violin by a woman who was interned uh, in a concentration camp and uh, was a classical violinist who ran a, an orchestra in her barracks of the camp. This is incredible that these 10 women found each other, stayed together, supported each other, and, and survived, and then came out to tell the tale. There are a number of cases where women who did find camaraderie together did survive, and many of them in later years said it was because of the friendship that I made that held us together and kept our hopes up during that period of time. Talk about what you have in the, in the lobby out here. 
Well, before we finish looking at the exhibition, I just wanted to show you something that we added here at the museum. And this is a number of panels about the righteous among the nations. Not only did Jewish women survive the Holocaust, but non-Jewish women did as well. So what we've done out here is put five panels of five different women who were instrumental in saving Jews during the Holocaust period. This is really powerful stuff. And you know, it's such a big topic and you get lost in that sometimes, and to bring it down to these stories, these very personal stories of individuals, it's a really unique way to do an exhibition. I love the video and the projections. Congratulations. The place has never looked better. The, the space looks great. Thank you. We're so very proud of this, and we hope many, many people will come to see it. It's a really new way of looking at the Holocaust, and it's not only very interesting, but it is very, very moving. I hope people will enjoy and come to the museum. Thanks so much, Linda. Great talking with you. Thanks, Tom. It's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.